These Golden State Warrior players are criminally underrated, so today we're going to give them their well-deserved flowers. The off-ball cuts to the basket and spot-up shooting that the quietly valuable Damian Lee provides to the distance daggery and wing defense brought to the table from Otto Porter Jr., and the grizzled but still incredibly effective veterans in Andre Iguodala and Draymond Green, there are too many players on the dubs who don't get nearly enough credit. So stay tuned to see the Warrior player who's most overlooked at the end. Quickly, 11.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back, links in the description for both those platforms. At the summit of their dynasty in the mid to late 2010s, the dubs dominated with multiple models of their infamous death lineup. As Steph ran the show, Golden State built around him with versatile, lengthy players on the perimeter who could guard one through five. This allowed the dubs to switch everything defensively, as despite a screen being set, that had almost no impact on the Warriors' multi-positional stoppers. It was a defensive approach that placed attacking players into proverbial chokeholds meant to invoke offensive stagnation and force inefficient shots. The team motto for so many years, strength in numbers, meant more than simply that Golden State had a ton of depth in their personnel. It also pertained to the strength in the small numbers in terms of the unorthodox height and size that Golden State often threw out there. The Warriors going outside of the traditional realms in the modern day game was much to the dismay of basketball talking heads, and it was odd at the time that the Warriors didn't have a seven foot big man on the court for a majority of the game. But while they were sacrificing strength, physicality, and tradition, Golden State would monumentally gain in terms of speed, pace, and innovation. While the dynasty years from 2015 to 2019 is a bygone era at this point, conversely, the idea of small ball has utterly changed the way basketball has been played and is far from out of fashion. To be fair, there's been a revival recently of seven foot bigs. However, they're more versatile in terms of their skill sets compared to players at their positions from previous eras. But of course, now in the modern NBA, there's still a significant amount of value to be had in playing small ball. Having said that, not every team has the personnel to achieve such a swift defensive configuration, nor can they survive prolonged periods with such compact lineups. Actually, I'll be more specific. Not every team in the association has the best 6'6 center on earth in Draymond Green to afford to play small ball. Draymond's capable of everything you could ask for from a small ball five man. Nevertheless, it's the soon to be two time DPOY's ability to constrain centers that tower over him, which makes miniature lineups extraordinarily operational. Okay, Green's going to get beat by bruising locomotives up front on occasion. Guys like DeAndre Ayton and Nikola Jokic, among others, have the pedigree, beastliness, and skill to get an easy two against a smaller man. But you can bet Dre's not ever allowing a made attempt over him to be a walk in the park. Much more important than Green's mastery locking up five men in ISO situations is Dre's highest ranking versatility and intelligence as a defensive center, which really stands out. The man has complete knowledge of every pick and roll coverage in existence, he can meet ball handlers at the level of the screen, he can hedge and recover in a timely manner toward his original assignment, he can blitz and trap ball handlers, and place an enormous amount of pressure on them. We're going to look at specific instances of Green's defense that has an underrated yet massively crucial impact on the Warriors, but first let's quickly look at one of the Warriors' biggest unsung heroes. That term, unsung heroes, may be a familiar one to you because it was on the thumbnail of this video I posted featuring Kavon Looney and also a few other unsung dubs heroes. I also mentioned Gary Payton II in that video, so be sure to go watch that video after this one. A criminally underrated talent I didn't mention in that video is Damian Lee. One of the things to like about Lee is that he just understands Coach Steve Kerr's offensive system. When Steph cuts back door, Lee's defender takes his eyes off him, Lee takes the opportunity to cut inside, receive the pass, and drill the floater with ease. He's an exceptional finisher around the key, as he makes an elite 82% of his attempts from 0 to 3 feet. But the fun doesn't end there with the undrafted product of Louisville. Damien's a laterally quick, active backcourt defender, and on the other end, along with his finishing, the man can space it out with a consistent and reputable three-point stroke. After spending time in Atlanta as a rookie, since being acquired by Golden State in 2018, Lee's posted two different seasons in 2018-19 and 2021, where he's attempted at least two threes each game 
and made an elite 40% of them. Damien's a great system player who never gets his credit, but Damien certainly deserved his flowers today. But back to the defensive mastermind in Draymond. In addition to what we just broke down, Dre can even play drop coverage significantly better than traditional bigs can. Green's able to easily read the precarious space between the ball handler and the rolling big, and he can simultaneously keep tabs on both attacking players involved in the two-man action. For example, the Sacramento Kings take a page out of the Warriors' playbook by running split action on this possession, but running it against the masters of the split action results in the Warriors having no problem shutting it down, which forces the Kings to resort to an empty side pick and roll. Empty side simply means that there's no defender present in the strong side corner to help on the roll, meaning that the defender on this play right here, it's Green, he's left alone to defend the two-man action. As Green showed in that clip you just saw, the man has zero complaints whatsoever about guarding the empty side action all on his own. Notice how he steps up to Buddy Heald as if to bait him into threading a pocket pass to Tristan Thompson. Buddy takes the bait, and Green simply puts a hand in the way of the pass to intercept it. Offensively, with Green as the five surrounded by a considerable amount of spacing, he has more room to operate as a roll man diver and cutter. Lanes open up, allowing him to put pressure and attack the rim with more verve and tenacity. Off of defensive stops, it allows him to outrun his lumbering counterparts, resulting in transition buckets. I know he's leading the DPOY race, but you get the feeling Draymond doesn't get all the credit he deserves for Golden State's success, because lineups with Green at center this season have been absolutely tearing opponents apart on both ends of the floor, outscoring opponents by a whopping 17 points per 100 possessions. Those lineups also limit opponents' rim frequency. Opponents attempt just 23.9% of their shots at the rim, the 99th percentile, while they're limited to an effective field goal percentage of 48.8%, which is in the 93rd percentile. Despite being one of the beastliest defenders in NBA history, in the NBA circle, while Draymond gets a decent amount of respect, you hear a lot of people calling him out pinpointing his lack of offense instead of truly taking into account how all-time great of a stopper he is. Green's success as a small ball five has allowed the likes of Otto Porter Jr. to thrive alongside Green as a small ball four. At six foot eight, Porter has the adequate physical abilities to guard power forwards and occasionally switch on to bigger centers. One-on-one -on -one defense isn't necessarily his strong suit, but should he find himself guarding bigs down low, he can hold his own and make scoring in the paint a difficult endeavor. But while Porter Jr. isn't particularly known for his individual defense, he's been really adept as a team defender, particularly as a capable help defender. His rotations are almost always on point, especially as the low man who steps up to stifle dribble penetration and contest shots at the rim. Porter's defense as a power forward in small ball situations is complemented by his ability to shoot and act as a stretch four. The spacing he provides has been monumental, especially when guarded by opposing fours who aren't as accustomed to stepping up toward the perimeter to close out on a shooter. Porter complements his outside shooting with an underrated inside game. He has enough size to power through mismatches and bully his way to the rim against smaller guards, much like a traditional power forward who finds himself with a mouse in the house. Lineups with Porter at the four and Green at the five have been very effective, especially on the defensive end. Those lineups are outscoring opponents by 7.3 points per 100 possessions, while limiting opponents to 99.2 points per 100 possessions, an elite mark. They limit rim attempts and force a numerous amount of turnovers. A positional shift from being a more traditional wing spacer to a stretch power forward has paid dividends. And not only for Porter Jr.'s career, but also for the Warriors. Porter said, quote, My role has definitely shifted a lot in recent years. Guys that used to be on the wings are now pick and pop fours. But that's just the game changing. Pick and pop bigs that can pop to the corner and shoot threes, but you still gotta be able to get in there with the roll guys and be able to help to rebound. And Automatic's got a great point. With the spacing stretching defenses to their personal limits, the Warriors are entering a new small ball era of domination, anchored by Green's two-way unicorn skill set and Porter Jr.'s floor stretching and capable defense. In Porter's case, it may provide a glimpse into yet another unheard of small ball lineup made possible by the eventual return of Klay Thompson. Draymond spoke on OPJ saying, we be joking with Klay, like this ain't the NBA, you left brother, you're coming back, you're going to be a stretch forward. It's just the way the league works. With Otto, obviously he came into this league as a 2-3, now he's kind of playing more of a 4-5. slash That's just how the game is gone, end quote. Just think of Klay as a stretch forward. 
a possible closing lineup of Curry, Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, Thompson, and Green. We can't forget about the 2015 Finals MVP and now 37-year-old, nearly bald-headed Andre Iguodala. But despite the fade fading a bit too far, Iggy's still got a little something left in the tank. Steve Kerr's realized that remaining value, as when he's been healthy for the 16 outings he's participated in, Andre's getting 20 minutes of playing time per night. As of Steph's record-breaking game, Iggy ranks second right behind Draymond Green in assists on Steph Curry triples. And yes, Curry is the Warriors' system, and this generational squad goes as far as he takes them. But I think the lesson of today's video is to be sure to give a somewhat similar amount of respect to the organization and players next to him who've allowed Steph to carve out the type of legacy that he has. Does Draymond's defense have a similar impact to Steph? I mean, Steph has a ton of underrated qualities as well, which I'll be sure to make another video on, but the best answer on that question that I just asked gets next video's commenter shoutout. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says, from what I've seen so far, I believe the Bulls are championship favorites this season. No team in the league got considerably better during the offseason like Chicago did. Pause to read the rest of Ona's amazing take. There are always elite takes from Ona. This was D-Flow. Love you all for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.